Pretty cute, huh? Got that from a patient earlier today. What's going on YouTube? My name is Ray, and I'll be taking x-rays. In this video, we're gonna be going over the fundamentals, the basics of the x-ray room, your x-ray tube, the buttons that you need to know, the, uh, the wall bucky, the uh, table bucky, the table itself, just the basics. This video is gonna be catered to those of you who have never been in the hospital setting, in the uh, x-ray room, students that are getting into the program. Those of you that are just diving in the books right now but are eager and maybe anxious and nervous about your first clinical rotation site. So uh, hopefully this gives you a jump start, gets your mind at ease a little bit, and um, yeah, without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So first off, we have your tube angulation button. This will allow you to tilt your tube either caudal or cephalic. Next, not too sure exactly what it's called, but I'm gonna call it your swivel button. This will allow you to swivel your tube around for your cross table radiographs and trauma situations. Next, we have your vertical button. This will allow you to adjust your tube higher or lower. Most of the times, your vertical, transverse, and longitudinal buttons are color coordinated with markings on the railings or ceiling mount to help remind you what button does what. Next will be a longitudinal button. This will allow you to bring your tube across the length of the table. To help me remember which way the yellow button is allowing me to go, I think of yellow as caution. The tube is moving side to side. Again, there are markings on the ceiling to help. The next button is known as a transverse button, allowing you to bring your tube across the width of the table. I remember this as danger, which is red, the tube is coming right at you or the table. These next two buttons will be your detent and all locks button. You want to first press your detent button and make sure it is not activated. Then press the all locks button to allow you to move your tube freely without running into or over a detent. You want to make sure the detent is not activated because in not doing so can cause damage to a magnet as you're moving across a would be detent. You will find your detents at a mid sagittal plane to the wall bucky, 40 or 45 and 72 inch SID to the wall bucky, and a mid sagittal plane to the table bucky. They are normally marked on the railings. You will know when you're detented by an indication from a light, physically feeling the tube lock into place, which can either be subtle or apparent, and or hearing it lock into place. Sometimes there's an audible sound that will alert you as you're approaching one. Also, at times there will be a notification letting you know your tube is not detented and will not let you expose. Next, let's head over to the wall buggy. This is your handrail. Currently, it's in the not in use position. I don't know what it's exactly called, but it's obviously ideal when not in use. To remove it or put it in use, simply pull up on the rail, remove or turn it and slide it back in. You can pull the rail away from the bucky, tilt the rail and release the rail to set the desired position. The further away from the bucky is ideal for patients with limited range of motion. Closer to the bucky is ideal for kids or patients with shorter reach. To set the wall bucky to a desired height, there is either a button or something to pull on behind the bucky. Next, let's head over to the table. I angle my tube down perpendicular to the floor, press the transverse button to go across the width of the table, looking up at the railing for the tube bucky detent marking, feel it lock into place, and then use the vertical button to lift my tube up. On the base of the table, we have buttons you can press with your foot. We have a button that allows you to freely move the table every which way, buttons that will allow you to move the table up and down, and another button to allow you to move the table. Not an ideal demonstration for learning purposes, but ideally, you'd want the table to be closer to waist level for ergonomic reasons. To open the table bucky, there is a handle that you pull on. Make sure it's fully extended out and the table is not covering the bucky in order to place the image receptor in. In this setup, there's a latch that you pull up on and then slide away from the table to fully open the bucky. To secure the image receptor in place, slide the latch inward towards the image receptor and flip the latch down. Here, I'm demonstrating aligning the tube to the bucky. 
Some tubes have a laser. This one has a faint light which you can see on the image receptor when the bucky is pulled out. To close the bucky, simply slide the bucky in all the way towards the table. You should feel it lock in place. If you need to adjust your bucky position, there's either a button you press or a knob that you pull on or twist. But don't forget to align the tube to the bucky once you're done. Also, if you angle the tube. And once you set it, forget it. Move the table, not your alignment. Now this may look simple, but here I'm demonstrating a common mistake many students will have. Always remember to double check that your tube and bucky are aligned before heading back to expose. Here's a grid for your image receptor. You want to make sure you don't make the common rookie mistake. So make sure the correct end is face down. With this setup, you place your image receptor inside the lip of the grid. There's a latch you slide, pull, and then release to secure the image receptor in place. To remove the image receptor, you simply slide and pull on the latch. Now I'm gonna have my intern Jerry uh, demonstrate a very common mistake that I made and I'm sure that you will counter as well. It's crazy because this was very difficult for me to remember uh, because I, I just got out of my system. But luckily he remembered because he's still obviously uh, learning and um, I'm very excited to kind of demonstrate this for you because it drives me insane. The mistake was I would always run out of track for my Bucky uh, when positioning my patient. So therefore I would have to either pull on the mat, pull on the, the sheet to pull my patient up on the table and then I would have to move my central ray up, my bucky up, realign that and then reposition. Such a hassle and irritate the f out of me. <laughs> so here we go. Go ahead. And the patient, the patient just got on the table. Oh, ah, oh. oh, shoot. <laughs> That's what it was. Cool. <laughs> and this is before the patient's on the table. So I made this video because I realized that, um, you know, these, these are things that I take for granted. Uh, coming from experience of being a transporter, being a patient transporter, I had the advantage over others, um, seeing x-ray equipment before, seeing the whole layout, pressing the buttons and whatnot. And I realized there are plenty of you who have not been in the medical field setting, never been in the x-ray department, never been in the x-ray room, so uh, hopefully this kind of sheds some light, hopefully makes you less anxious and more prepared for when you first step into your first x-ray room. Whether it be at school in your open skills lab or your first clinical rotation. So these are the basics. These are the common buttons that I use every day. Um, obviously I'm going to use the tube and the wall bucky and the table, um, the grid. If you have any other questions, uh, something that you want me to go over, leave a comment down below. Hopefully you get great value from this. And thank you, I appreciate you for tuning in and uh, trusting me, trusting me with helping you along your journey. If you found value from this video, press that like button, subscribe for my x-ray content, and share this with others that may have value from it. Please, please, please 
Do not get discouraged. You may be overwhelmed with all this information. You may not have been in a classroom setting for how many years. There may be a lot of terminology that you may not have heard before. You may be intimidated with other students that have more knowledge than you, uh, have, that may have more experience than you. But trust me, do not get discouraged. Do not put yourself down. I've witnessed it myself. There's gonna be different levels of experience. Each student is gonna progress at different speeds. I would say by internship year or so, it all becomes a level playing field. Everybody kind of just levels out. Just stick to it, have faith. You did not get this far to get this far. You did not wait on that waiting list for all this time just to quit in your first month your first, second, third semester, whatever have you. Stay strong, stay motivated. Hit me up if you have any questions. I wanna see you succeed. You're not only doing this for yourself, man, you're doing this for your family, you're doing this for your future. This is your legacy. You got greatness within you, I'll see you at the top. My name is Ray, and I'll be taking x-rays. I love, baby.